Okay, everybody, welcome to the uh, Tuesday, July 14th, 2020 Scranton City Council Caucus. Uh, we have Councilman Donahue, Councilman McAndrew, Councilman Schuster, and Councilman Rothschild here, as well as our City Clerk, Lori Reed, and our Council Solicitor, Kevin Hayes. So thank you everyone for being here. Um, we have quite a few things on the agenda tonight, uh, so we'll, we'll end up running through those in a minute. Um, I have a uh, few things that, that I wanna go over and uh, then I'll turn it over to all of you uh, to see if you have anything that you would like to discuss. Um, the first thing I, I would like to um, just go over is with uh, Solicitor Hayes. So I know there's, there's a few things that uh, Solicitor Hayes is going to update us on. The first thing I'll ask uh, Solicitor Hayes is if you would give us an update on the recycling uh, issues that we talked about the last few weeks. And I guess the first question would be, has the um, authority responded to our request for information? Okay, uh, so on uh, July 8th, so last Wednesday, uh, at your direction, I sent correspondence to the Board of Commissioners uh, where we, um, where I described the issues that were raised during last week's meeting and request a clarification on five items, uh, namely uh, the, the, the current agreement between the authority, the Lackawanna County Solid Waste Management Authority and the operator of the recycling center. Uh, it was reported to us at the meeting last Tuesday that that, that agreement was essentially null and void that it had been terminated by virtue of the fact that the county or the authority rather was no longer providing uh, uh, inmates from the Lackawanna County Prison to work at the recycling center. Uh, the first, so the first question we, we asked was, the agreement says that the authority shall use its best efforts to provide the operator with the same number of prisoners. Uh, it doesn't say shall, um, and we were we requested a, whether the uh, opinion letter had been issued by count, by a, the solicitor for the authority or someone else that the agreement had in fact been breached. Um, the second question we asked was whether uh, pursuant to the agreement, the operator agreed to provide, uh, to collect the same recyclable commodities that it was accepting in 2006 at the same pricing structure uh, that was in effect in 2005. And if that was the case, and the agreement wasn't terminated, then then why would the, the authority being, um, why would they agree to, to limit the type of recyclables being delivered and the pricing of said deliveries? Uh, we then asked uh, who are the members, who are the current members of the authority's board? And um, when, when was the authority's vote that approved this re revised recycling program? And lastly, we asked for uh, copies of all the Excel spreadsheets, which were referenced in the operator's letter to the authority, which served as the basis for their justification to charge the municipalities. Um, so the, the commissioners wrote back to, to me uh, on last Thursday and indicated that this, these questions should be directed to the authority. I then um, reached out to the authority's solicitor who is Tom Cummings and we spoke last week and I asked him to uh, just provide us with responses to these questions as soon as he could because um, the deadline for implementing this program or the start date for impl implementing this new program is July the 20th. I wrote to uh, uh, Attorney Cummings again today and he responded and indicated that I sh we should have some type of response from the authority uh, by Friday of this week. And the one issue that I, I know I discussed with Attorney Cummings and I've, I've talked to the law department of the city is the fact that um, there's, there's a bidding threshold uh, in, in the administrative code, uh, the city's administrative code that indicates that any bids, in, any contracts for $20,000 or more require a competitive bidding process, a sealed bid process. Uh, so I've raised that issue. Um, I think the suggestion was made that this could potentially be um, permitted through an emerg emergency certification or emergency procurement. I, I don't know that I necessarily agree with that justification, but that, that was suggested. And um, I know, it's, uh, I think it was, I think it was Council President um, Gone, you had asked what the authority is, correct? Like, what, what do they do? 
Yeah, I was curious to find out um, more about how the authority operated, what their what their functions were. Okay, so in in summary, um, Act One Hundred and One, of State Law, requires each county or is it, or is it its designee to adopt a waste management plan for um, for the for a ten year period, and it has to be submitted to the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection for their approval. Um, the purpose of the plan is to ensure that adequate disposal capacity for the count, the county's municipal waste is 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 in place and for Lackawanna County that designee is is the Lackawanna County solid waste management authority so that's the entity that manages this plan for our county okay so you know I I don't know about everybody else but the the fact that first of all we just found out about this really last week I was made aware the day before that there was a meeting uh, at the 911 center that attorney Hayes had uh, gone to represent counsel at. So it just seems to me that all of this kind of came out of nowhere and, and moved so quickly. And now we're supposed to make a decision or there's a deadline that I guess we're supposed to meet by July 20th. So, um, you know, we're being put in a, a very precarious position in my, my opinion uh, in being told now that or it being suggested that, you know, possibly an emergency declaration should come down from uh, the city controller um, so that we could enter into some kind of agreement with the, uh, with the operator. What, what I don't understand is the emergency. Uh, to me, it seems like in, in listening to Solicitor Hazen, from what I understand from reading the accounts in the newspaper is that uh, the emergency is the operator couldn't use prison inmates. My concern is why are Scranton and other boroughs and municipalities throughout the county being rushed into making a decision? If the current contract is still in place, then no one should be required to pay anything, correct, Solicitor Hayes? If the current contract is uh, not null and void, which I, I don't know that we've even, we, we have not gotten clarification on that exactly yet, but if the, the current contract is in place, then why should we, why should we do anything? Right. So the current contract is that I, that I, the only contract that I've seen is it's called the professional service operating agreement between the authority and Lackawanna County Recycling Center, Inc. Uh, that has been, it was, it was uh, executed in 2006. It's been renewed uh, multiple times. I think the current term goes through May of 2021 and there's no indication in that agreement that there would be a revised pricing schedule that would be passed on to the municipalities unless I'm missing something. So if that agreement's still in place, that can't that I don't see how that could serve as the basis for um, these new fees being passed on to the municipalities. There had to have been some other ancillary agreement made between the operator and the authority, which I assume was approved by the authority um, that would permit this. Yeah, and I, I think that is one of my, my other questions is if there is another agreement or first of all, if, if the contract is in fact null and void, then what agreement is the operator actually working under and who was that approved by? Was it approved by the authority? And when was it approved by, by the authority? So who's making these, these uh, decisions? So just so I, I and again, I'll, I want to run this by every, everybody in the caucus, but I, I think what we should do is, based on what Solicitor Hayes had, had mentioned tonight about the waste management plan, just so maybe we could get a better idea of how this authority operates, uh, I would like to request that uh, Mrs. Reed reach out um, through correspondence to the authority and ask that they provide the current uh, waste management plan and the prior waste management plan. And I also think that we should take a look at uh, the financial statements for uh, the last five years, just to see what the authority has brought in in terms of revenue and uh, what what is being uh, what is being expended. So I, I will make that motion uh, tonight if that is okay with everyone. And then um, Solicitor Hayes, I guess the next step here would be that uh, the executive director and solicitor, Mr. Cummings, is is supposed to reach out to you by Friday. You said. Yeah, he indicated that he should have responses. Uh, He'd have a response to our questions by Friday. Yes. Okay. 
Okay. Um, does any, so I'll make that motion uh, later on in the meeting. And, you know, I, I do think that we should continue to, before we rush into any decision, which it seems like that's what's being suggested here, is that we make sure that we have all our ducks in a row and we do our due diligence. But does anybody else have anything on the recycling, uh, recycling contract or the, re the recycling issues that we're discussing? Yeah, I, I want to see the plan also. And so, so we're being told that, okay, we're not going to get any information till Friday, which is the 17th. And then, the, you know, the next day is Monday in the real world next, you know, uh, and then have to make a decision the next day on Tuesday. And also, um, Solicitor Hayes, you made reference to a 10 year plan. So how old is the plan we're working under? Has it expired? Is it, is it the fifth year? I, I, I have no idea. I'm sorry, what? I don't know. So the way the, the law is written is that every 10 year, they have to have a, a plan in place that is, that covers a 10 year time frame. And um, so I don't know where they're at right now in that. Maybe they're operating under a new plan. And that's why it would probably be smart to have the prior plans. I, I don't know where that is and what that includes. So that would be really helpful for, for everyone understanding what, what their program is. I agree. Thank you. Anyone else on the re recycling uh, issues? So wait, is this something we will be? Oh, sorry, go ahead, Kyle. We haven't heard back from the administration on whether they plan on putting it out for bid either, right? Um, I think uh, they likely agree with our position that this under the administrative code that this is something that would require, require bidding. You know, the projections that they have is that if, if we agree to this program, this proposed program that that would in, that would collect commingled recyclables that excluded glass, it would st it's still estimated to be over twenty thousand dollars in a twelve month period. So that's going to trigger the three seal bid requirement under the administrative code. I, I don't see how we could avoid that, or why would we, why would even if we wanted to. So I think that I'm assuming that the administration will agree with that position, and, and I, I'm, I'm and I'm in my discussions with the. Um, the law department, I think that that's the direction they're going in right now. Okay. And I mean, I don't know how everyone else feels, but we shouldn't use, I don't think, like the fact that we're on recess for the month of August as a reason to kick the can down the road. You know, if we have to come back, I think for some sort of meeting to get something done, I think we should. That sounds fine by me. Are, are we asked to do anything prior to the Monday the 20th? I'm, I'm just saying, don't, I'm, I'm just saying maybe we, reach out to the administration and say, you know, if you could get it done faster, get it done faster. You know, don't wait to, until September, just to wait till December or September, sorry. Okay, anything else? The real, the real, the real issue is gonna be what happens effective July 20th, you know, you know? That's something I guess that the Department of Public Works is gonna have to, is, is gonna have to re, re, reach some resolution on that issue with the operator, with the authority. And that's why we were, we had such short deadlines, I think, in, in trying to get this information as to why, how this all came about so quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Solicitor Hayes, that's what I was asking. Is there any type of um, actions that we need to take prior to the 20th or just as the 20th, this is now going to be what the authority deems as our plan? I don't think there's anything the council can do. Obviously, I think the Department of Public Works is going to have to work out some type of alternate plan or or, or, or an agreement while this while the bids are the bid process is going is going forward. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to add. Um, yeah, I, I think it's incredibly frustrating that um, that they aren't taking the the commingles and so many the recyclables and that they breached the contract and uh, we clearly need to find um, someone else for a recycling program. Um, I, I'm in agreement with additional correspondences being sent so that we can get answers to our questions. And I mean, I don't really understand how this is allowed to go on for so long that uh, these agreements hadn't been looking out at, at before and we don't know when these when these plans end. And um, I'm definitely interested in, in seeing uh, what we get back from, from the authority on this. Um, Cause I feel like we should have been notified if there weren't new, uh, new agreements put in place. Um, so uh, that's all I have to say. 
Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up, Solicitor Hayes had um, informed <clears throat> us that we had an update on the, or we had requested an update on how much has been expended on the Act 511 um, lawsuit to date. And I, I believe the figure that was sent out by Solicitor Hayes in his communications with the administration was uh, from January 12th, 2020 to June 30th, 2020, a total of $175,858. Uh, has been expended for a total of 520 hours. Um, so that was the, the update received from the administration. Um, the only other thing uh, I want to bring up just in terms of making a motion, I would like to make a motion uh, tonight that uh, council asked for an update from the administration on where they are with uh, the recommendations made in our exit plan from the Pennsylvania Economy League. This is something that I have asked for uh, before with previous administrations and have not really ever gotten a complete um, update on. Um, for many years, uh, the council was pretty much ignored on, on this issue. And it's a very, very important issue, especially if we're going to have an additional uh, 18 months in Act 47, which, which I hope that we do for all the reasons I stated last week. But I did have a, a brief opportunity to talk to the mayor uh, late this afternoon, and I did express uh, my... Um, you know, plan to make a, a motion tonight to ask for an update. And she agreed that that would be uh, a fine to provide a, a status update on each of the exit plan recommendations uh, in the city's exit plan. So just one quick example, um, a debt management policy. I know that's been uh, talked about before. Adoption of a pension fund governance policy, a capital improvement financing plan. Uh, most of these things are... Um, would have to come down in the formal legislation that council would give uh, our approval on. And then there's quite a few other ones as well, an updated human resources management plan. These are all things that really have been in place uh, since at least 2017, if, if not longer. So I think it's important that we get just a general update on uh, what kind of progress the administration is making or has made on all of these uh, action items in the exit plan. Um, and then before I turn it over to, uh, uh, to you guys, just in terms Bill, of this. Bill, yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just to add, uh, are you sending it in like a list, or are you just going to say the like the action items that are in the exit plan? Yeah, I would like um, just every recommendation that's made, and they're they're pretty much delineated uh, uh, in the exit plan. Every recommendation, just to give yeah. us a general update. Even if I mean, I know some of them just by looking at them, I know that they've been completed, but if they have been. They could just put complete. Okay. I know yeah. some of them even. Sorry, go ahead. I think OPEC Trust is one of them too that I'd be mm -hmm. interested to see on where we're at for the workers' count. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think it's uh, I think it's important uh, that we receive that, and I know that several citizens in the past have asked uh, for that as well. Um, and then in terms of the legislation for tonight, uh, everything is pretty straightforward. As everyone knows, we received. Um, dozens and dozens and dozens of complaints on, on fireworks and ATVs. So I'm, I'm going to flip it over to Solicitor Hayes uh, in a second just to talk about um, some of the things that he's seen on the agenda or anything he wants to comment on. Um, so we have those two things. We also have the um, an ordinance related to the uh, city's flood uh, floodplains. Um, I did have an opportunity today to talk to uh, Don King, as you can see, when you look at that legislation, it's quite lengthy and uh, really technical, but basically the city is adopting new uh, FEMA floodplain maps um, for the whole entire city of Scranton. Um, these changes stem from the adoption by FEMA of the new flood map, map set to become effective on August 5th. So in order for us uh, as the city of Scranton to participate in the National Flood Insurance Program, we have to agree to adopt the floodplain uh, management regulations that meet or exceed their minimum standards. So that's the whole purpose of uh, this legislation. And then in talking with Mr. King, um, he informed me that if anyone from the public would like to take a look at these floodplain maps, you just have to go on FEMA's website and uh, just type in FEMA flood maps. It'll come right up. I actually did it today. You can type in your address and see if you were in the floodplain. Now, with this, these new maps, according to Mr. King, some people will be included in the maps that weren't before. 
Uh, most of these people, uh, from what Mr. King has said to me today, are in Green Ridge near the Stafford Meadowbrook Creek. Um, so they'll get notified officially by FEMA and probably by their bank or their mortgage company because they'll, they'll now need uh, flood insurance. So um, there were meetings held last year between the city, uh, FEMA, and members of the public that were advertised publicly uh, per their regulations. So just to give you guys an update on, on that. And then um, 5G... Uh, the multi-bridge project agreement, uh, that is just, um, we're amending the original agreement from I believe last year, the year before to uh, increase the project costs. Um, one of the things, Lori, I'd like you to ask the uh, administration, I just, just to jog my memory, because I couldn't remember today, uh, the city's portion of the, uh, uh, the funding here would be roughly a little bit less than one and a half million dollars. So, Lori, if you can just find out from the business administrator uh, if we have these funds available. I think they're in the capital improvement uh, program, but I wasn't I wasn't positive. I know there was discussion on this uh, maybe a year or two ago when when we had started talking about uh, the West Lackawanna Av Avenue Bridge, the Elm Street Bridge, so on and so forth. So, if you could just double check with uh, the business administrator on that, because that will be coming up. So, I will. Okay. Um, all right. That's all I have. Uh, everything else is pretty straightforward on the agenda. So, Kevin, uh, I'll flip it over to you now if you just want to talk about uh, fireworks, ATVs, and anything else on the agenda. Sure. The um, two uh, regulations which are being re having their first reading tonight, uh, the first is the re regarding the regulation of ATVs and snowmobiles. Um, as we had discussed previously, ATVs and, and snowmobiles are not permitted on, on any city street or highway. No road has been designated for their use. So they're technically not, they're not permitted except in emergency situations. Uh, if there's an emergency declaration that specifically permits them to be on the roads or if they're just crossing at a 90 degree angle uh, of street or a highway. Uh, with the legislation that um, the, the administration has proposed uh, it is similar to what other municipalities have adopted. Uh, it would uh, it would place restrictions on gas stations from uh, dispensing gas to ATVs or snowmobiles that they see oper operating on our streets and highways. So it, it would it would there be some recourse against the gas station owners if they filled up uh, these um, if, if they permit it. ATVs and, and snowmobiles to uh, get gas at their, their stations. Um, there is gonna be, I, I'm gonna suggest some revisions to the initial draft and uh, circulate that, uh, but we'll have, uh, so it may be amended in it from its current form. Uh, with regard to the other ordinance, which is being uh, read for uh, the first time tonight is the uh, um, fireworks ordinance, which would basically restrict um, the use of, of uh, consumer grade fireworks between 9 p.m. and 7 a.m., except for on New Year's Eve, 4th of July, Labor Day, Memorial Day, and would impose a fine of $300 for violation of, of that. Um, this is basically a short-term plan for what we were, we were hoping will be a, a much more broad uh, ordinance addressing fireworks should the legislation uh, which passed the Senate become law uh, this year. And in that case, we would have much broader authority and, and, and uh, there's a lot more we could do to restrict fireworks in our city. So those are those two pieces of legislation. Um, I know on my list uh, they, from various members of council is NRS. Um, I believe that, you know, Acting Solicitor Joe O'Brien has really made his best efforts to, to try to get the information that we've been requesting for months. He has not been successful in getting a meeting with that particular vendor, so I don't know where you want to want, want to go from that. But I don't have any update um, on that yeah, issue. I I, I I think we tried to be as patient as we possibly could on this, and I do know that there there's been uh, the law department is doing their best to get answers to the questions before um, uh, solicitor Esker had had um, uh, taken a leave here. I. I know that she she said that uh, we would we were going to expect those answers, but at this point, 
um, I, I am concerned that uh, some of those things that had been mentioned a year ago, uh, I don't know if they've been accomplished yet or if they're close to accomplishing them. I just look at the calendar. It's July, it's August, it's September. I know how difficult it is to transition from um, one company to another company or one company to the county or that, that was apparently the original plan. And now I, I don't really know exactly what is going on here, but um, I do know that the sentiment of, of the previous council and in uh, speaking with, with all of you and, and on the matter that uh, I don't think that the city should be uh, working with NRS anymore for all the reasons that we previously discussed. So. Um, what I would like to do, I guess, Mrs. Reed, if we could send uh, another um, piece of correspondence uh, asking for an update, if you could copy the representatives from uh, NRS on it that we had previously. And uh, I am going to speak to the mayor about asking someone from her administration who, who, who's ever responsible in that and putting this thing together to come and, and to uh, answer questions uh, that, that council has if we don't get anything in writing. Uh, by next, at least next week. So, um, and Bill, just you know, just a reminder. Going back, I think it was a year ago that council requested that uh, you know NRS be terminated as soon as possible. You know, and here we are a year later, and they're still here. So right, right. So there are definitely some issues there. Um, does anybody have anything else for Solicitor Hayes in terms of the agenda items, ATVs, fireworks, anything else? Just on the uh, ATV, um, I think I'm gonna, you know, ask that we send correspondence just the administration uh, first, <clears throat> just for an explanation of the all, overall enforcement strategy and how this is gonna be enforced. Um, second, you know, is how are we gonna properly notify gas station owners? You know, is that gonna be done via certified mail? Um, and one thing that was brought up to me this afternoon that actually was a good point, um, you know, if, if one of these pull up, you know, they use a credit card, you know, it sort of makes it harder for the gas station owners to, uh, you know, enforce that on their end too. Cause it's not like you're filling up a car where it, you know, might take a few minutes, you know, you could get out in and out with a credit card pumping, you know, into an ATV, a smaller tank in, you know, two minutes. So I think that's a concern as well. But just, I, I, it definitely needs to be done. I just want to make sure that, you know, we're going to be able to properly enforce it as well. Okay, good. I also had a question regarding the ATV ordinance. Um, I believe the way it's worded, it sounds like it in, um, is when the ATVs are being used on, uh, on scrapped roads. So it say they were, the ATV was on a truck bed and they, they bring it, um, to the gas station to fill it up in that manner, that should be um, fine in accordance with the ordinance, right? Yes, That's correct, Dr. Okay. Rothschild. It says that is uh, uh, ATVs and snowmobiles that are operating. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's a question. That's an issue that I know I spoke earlier with um, um, Councilman Garden, or um, Donahue about, and that mm -hmm. he had the same concern. But it 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 it's, it's, it specifically states that are operating. So okay. in the event, you know, presumably if somebody was going up to Old Forge, New York and had a ATV on his his or her trailer and mm -hmm. filled it up, they would not be a violation of the ordinance. Okay. Yeah, because I certainly think people should be able to fill up, um, you know, the gas tanks on their ATVs and, and vehicles like that. But, um, you yeah, know, obviously I understand if they're bringing it there, then they have to ride on Granton roads illegally in order to, uh, to make that purchase. So we want to avoid that and um, keep people from using them on Scranton roads as much as possible. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. I agree. Anyone else for Solicitor Hayes on uh, agenda items? Yes. So I'm thrilled with both of these new pieces of legislation, the fireworks and the ATV. But, um, you know, it's a, a concerned citizen reached out to me and, you know, this is this is a law abiding citizen. The guy's 40, has kids. This, this is his form of recreation. Um, using these ATVs and, and, you know, he stressed to me some great talking points. He said, you know what, we should be enforcing responsible ownership and usage of these vehicles. And his, you know, his concerns or his questions are, you know, first of all, if they drive to the gas station, they're driving illegally anyways, whether they're going to be refused or not. 
he he suggested you know i don't know if this is a possibility but you know that these vehicles should be licensed and registered and should be carrying insurance uh, if driven on the street so i mean they break the law coming for gas anyways already so and uh, and he also said, which was which is something I didn't realize either. He said a lot of these vehicles use aftermarket um, legal parts that you know they create louder, uh, obnoxious exhaust. They should be fined for that. I mean that's part of the nuisance. Not only that are they running through stop signs, not but they're loud and, and you know they're very loud. And they're not only are they driving illegally on our streets, but they're they're driving illegally based on how they're being retrofitted with these parts. So I, I said, I, I love the legislation. I just think maybe we tighten it up since we have the opportunity to throw it out there. Let's explore a little bit. I mean, the fine is the fine, but let's see if we can, you know, force these people to be more, like this gentleman said, a, a more response, take more responsible ownership of, of the usage of these vehicles. Not just say you're going to pay $300 if I catch you getting gas. Because I agree with Kyle, what is, what is going to be a strategy to enforce both of these pieces of legislation. Like I said, I'm thrilled with them. I'm very happy that, you know, that the mayor and the chief worked on all these, but like, I think at some point, everybody has to be briefed. This is what we're gonna do. Um, I, I know that's a little premature because we're waiting for the house to vote, but moving forward, and I'm gonna bring this up a little bit. I'll just summarize this and in, in under fifth order, but you know, since we have the opportunity, especially with the ATVs, let's, let's maybe beef up uh, so it's fair for everybody. And that's all I have. Thanks. And <clears throat> Kevin, just on the, uh, with the fireworks, right? So we, it's within that certain time frame, and until the state house passes that new law that would al allow us to ban them all right outright, we still have to use that specific time frame, right? But, yeah, this would, again, there are other restrictions that are that are also that are already on the books. In, in the city, you know, you can't be with 150 feet of a residential area. You can't, there, there are other, and I think that's what I want to add to this just to further memorialize what already is on the books. But yes, this only, this only addresses um, during that time frame. It doesn't do the broad. But uh, yeah, and we can't, but we can't ban them outright until the state house passes the law that the state Senate has already passed, correct? Right. That's right. Okay. okay. Anyone else? So yeah, um, it's just quick, so like saying enforcing it until it's passed by the by the house. That's similar to what happened. You guys are a little, a little younger than me, but the smoking ban in the city. I remember the council approved it, but um, it wasn't. You know, it was hard to enforce. And I think no. City, so city so was Mark, similar. Mark, we we could we could do what we're doing now under current law but for us to ban them outright like completely we have to wait for the state house to pass the legislation that the state senate has already passed okay just thinking out loud a little bit yeah so we can enforce you know what we're what's on our agenda tonight you know as soon as we pass it but to ban them outright without having you know, just 24 hours a day they're banned. We have to wait for the state house to pass that legislation. Okay, anything else? Mr. Schuster, I think you wanna pipe in here. Yeah, so when it comes to the ATV um, ordinance, is, is this something that was mirrored on like other communities that's been effective in keeping them off the streets? I, I would imagine. Uh, I don't know where, you know, what was the motivation for this particular legislation, uh, but I, I know that in my own research, I saw that other, for instance, I think Carbondale passed one similar to this several years ago. So um, it makes sense to, to just as a, another another uh, tool to control it. Um, but I don't know where the where the, the administration uh, got, the, got the idea to, to pursue it. Okay, okay. When it came to the flood maps, um, Bill, did they talk about most of the changes you said were in the Greenridge area? That's what Mr. King had uh, told me today, yeah. Was there any other areas that they said that the, the maps had changed? Or? He, he didn't mention that to me. He said most of it was in, in Greenridge. There may be some other uh, minor changes, but if you go on um, FEMA's website, you'll see the old map. And then I think he said um, 
the new map will say pending on it. And if you click on that, you'll be able to see the see the areas. Yeah, now that I know what, what's, that what's been uh, what's been added. Okay, yeah, now that I know that, I'll definitely check that out. I know the, that one property that we've gotten a couple um, different letters letters from citizens about on Merrifield Ave. That one there, I, I think, is actually considered in the floodplain. So I was wondering if that designation had changed down in there, or if it was something they mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't I don't know off the top of my head, but okay. All right. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Thank you, uh, Solicitor Hayes. Uh, Lori, do you have anything? Uh, yes, thank you. Just two quick items, just regarding upcoming um, items for your calendar. Next week, July 21st, uh, we'll have a public hearing for item 5D, amending the zoning ordinance for the floodplain management regulations. And then immediately following that, Leslie Collins, uh, the executive director for Scranton tomorrow, will provide an update. Um, and then the following week, July 28th, which happens to be the last meeting prior to the August recess, ABM officials will be at the caucus to provide their quarterly update on parking. Okay, great. Thank you, Mrs. Reed. Uh, okay, I'll just, we have uh, about eight minutes left, so I'll just go around the room here, the Hollywood Squares, and see what everybody else has. Uh, Councilman McAndrew, anything from you? You good? Okay. Dr. Rothschild, do you have anything? Uh, no, I'm good. I'm good as well. Thank you. Okay. Councilman Donahue, anything? I'm mute. Uh, no? Okay. He's on mute. Uh, Councilman Schuster, do you have anything? Oh, uh, last week we had, there was a couple of questions that were asked about the Act 47 exit. Um, I'm not sure who asked them. I don't really remember, but I know, um, we asked them, you know, what were some of the pros, what were some of the, um, you know, services that we were getting under Act 47. I think we were supposed to get a, a list of those services. And also, um, I think uh, Mr. Dunn, who had a question about the uh, LST and a possible loss of some revenue there. Did we ever get any any answers on that? Councilman Dunn, did you get answers on that? I did bring up, um, you know, really the LST wasn't addressed specifically, um, but I did bring up today with Jim Rose from DC, DCD uh, about the list and he said he would provide that of the list of financial benefits we get in Act 47 from DCD. Okay. But we haven't got it yet, but he, I did mention it today to him and he said we should have it uh, soon. Okay, thanks. Anything else, Tom? No, that's it. No. All right, I don't have anything else. So we have uh, seven minutes to spare here. So we will reconvene at 6.30 sharp and we'll get our regular meeting started. Thanks everybody. Thank okay, I'd like to call this public meeting to order. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silent reflection for our service men and women throughout the world and also for those who have passed away in our community. Let us also take a special moment of silence tonight for people in our community and throughout the world who are suffering or who have passed away from the coronavirus. Let us think about them and their families at this time that they may find peace. Let us think now about the doctors, nurses, researchers and all medical professionals and first responders who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they find protection and peace. Whether we are home or abroad, surrounded by many people suffering from this illness or only a few, let us stick together, endure together, mourn together, persist and prepare together, and in place of our anxiety, let us continue to hope and find peace. Thank you. All right. And Ms. Carrera, roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Present. Mr. McAndrew? Present. Dr. Rothschild? 
I'm here. Mr. Donahue? Here. Mr. Gone? Here. Mrs. Reed, please dispense with the reading of the minutes. Thank you. Third order, 3A minutes of the Scranton Municipal Recreation Authority Board of Directors meeting held July 3, 2020. 3B, correspondence received from U.S. Department of Homeland Security's Federal Emergency Management Agency dated July 1, 2020 regarding National Flood Insurance Program regulations. 3C, minutes of the Scranton Redevelopment Authority meeting held March 4, 2020. 3D, correspondence sent to Lackawanna County Commissioners dated July 8, 2020 regarding Lackawanna County Recycling Center. 3E, minutes of the Historical Architecture Review Board meeting held June 11, 2020. Thank you, Mrs. Reed. Are there any comments on any of the third order items? If not, received and filed. Do any council members have any announcements at this time? Um, I do, I have two of them. So here's one. Uh, are you wondering if you had COVID-19, wondering if you had the antibodies, or are you thinking about, are you thinking about donating some blood? So Scranton High is sponsoring a blood drive schedule for July 12th from 1 to 6 p.m. That, that will benefit the uh, Student Council's Red Cross Scholarship Program for the 2021 school year. This blood drive will be held at the American Red Cross Blood uh, Donation Center on Olive Street. Please schedule uh, an appointment by calling 1-800-RED-CROSS. And they also have, for a limited time, uh, the Red Cross is offering a COVID-19 antibodies test for all blood platelet and plasma donations uh, as an additional health service for, for uh, their donors. Also, uh, Bob Gattens from the REC Authority, he, uh, he posted, the REC Authority at NAOG is happy to announce that the Villa Capri Car Show will be held at NAOG Park Sunday, August 30th. Uh, that's all I have, thanks. Thank you, anyone else have any announcements? Okay, uh, I just have two. A public hearing is gonna be held next Tuesday, July 21st at 5.45 p.m. for item 5D on tonight's agenda, which amends the zoning ordinance for floodplain management regulations. Also immediately following the public hearing, council will meet in caucus with Leslie Collins, executive director of Scranton tomorrow. Mrs. Collins will provide their quarterly update. A public caucus will also be held Tuesday, July 28th with representatives from NDC for the purposes of receiving our quarterly parking garage update. That's all I have. Mrs. Reed. Court order, citizens participation. Thank you, Mrs. Reed. Will someone please make a motion to accept public comment from the following individuals, Patricia Nestor, Marie Decker, Leonard Shoemaker, Faye Franis, and Marie Schumacher. I'll make a motion to accept public comment. Second. On the question? On the uh, question, um, one of the things uh, Ms. Franis brought up in her comment was <clears throat> um, the 500 block of Luzerne Street. Um, I know we've gotten a lot of complaints about that area and I know we've passed them along to licensing and inspection. So Ms. Reed, would we be able to reach out to licensing and inspection just to get an update on what's being done on that block? They did, um, Mrs. Reed, did, I, did Mr. Oleski did provide an update on that, didn't he, I think? Did he? I would have to check back in the file, Councilman Gunn. Yeah, I think, um, what I remember, because uh, I had reached out to him, you know what, I can't remember if, if I just talked to him or if it came through the office, but um, he did tell me that they went out and um, uh, visited that that place. It used to be a gas station, but now there's just a bunch of cars uh, sitting there. I don't know if it's now, a, I don't know what it is now, to be honest with you, but it, I've received complaints from Mrs. Franis and other uh, neighbors in, in that area, and I... Uh, Mr. Oleski told me that they tagged the cars. It was going to the magistrate. And one of the neighbors told me since then, um, the issues, it's still there, but it's the cars of, there's been less cars there. So, but we could, we should follow up on that. Just uh, a couple of it's been two weeks. So, all right. 
Yeah, I was I was going to add it later tonight, but I was going to ask if there was a follow up on that gas station there on Luzerne Railroad, as well as any of those other houses, because I know there's a lot of garbage and things in that area and at, at other residences. And then last week, we also asked about that 1642 Sanderson Ave. Um, and I did reach out to that individual and they said it's business as usual. Some of the same stuff is going on there. So I don't know if we got an update on if uh, anybody had looked into the Sanderson Ave residence, but if we could add that to, to that list. Sure. Definitely. Yep, we will do. Anyone else have a question? I uh, just wanted to say that um, I went through all of the public comment. Uh, any questions here that uh, should be posted to the administration will be sent to the appropriate officials within the administration. Uh, public comment will be placed into the official record and our official minutes. If anyone would like to take a look at the public comment, you can go to www.scrantonpa.gov and click on Council's uh, webpage. Any questions that um, were posed uh, are forwarded, whether it's to the mayor or, or the appropriate department head. And um, if anyone would like to submit uh, comments to the council based on our agenda items or just official city business, as always, you can email those comments to Lori Reed, our city clerk, at lreed at scrantonpa.gov. We will accept public comment until the day of our meeting, Tuesday at 4.30 p.m. Um, and uh, our agendas are posted for public review the Friday before our Tuesday meeting. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Mrs. Reed. Fifth order, 5A motions. Councilman Schuster, any motions or comments tonight? Not at this time. Thank you. Councilman McAndrew, do you have any motions or comments at this time? Uh, I have a comment. Uh, I received uh, an email from a concerned uh, citizen today that the lookout uh, on Musick Street uh, up near Lake Scranton, that there's, a, there's quite a bit of graffiti. Uh, I also noticed not too long ago driving by that there's, there's a lot of garbage. Um, and you know what, to be honest with you, I'm not sure what entity is responsible for the upkeep of this, if, if Mrs. Reed could please send some corres correspondence to the city just to clarify who, who's actually responsible and, and how's, how's it done and when is it done. I'd appreciate that very much. And also, we talked in caucus about uh, the, new, the two new pieces of legislation we're, we're bringing forward tonight, which I'm thrilled with the mayor and the chief of police putting this together and, you know, one being fireworks, the other being um, the ATV. And I think since we had the opportunity with the ATV piece of legislation, uh, like I mentioned in caucus, um, a gentleman reached out to me today who, who, who's, <clears throat> who's a responsible ATV owner. And his concerns are, you know, maybe the enforcement, uh, we should enforce responsibility on the ownership and, and the usage of these vehicles, that maybe they should be licensed and registered. So, uh, and they'll have to carry insurance if driven on the street, because like we said, we're going to um, charge a fine <clears throat> to these people to go to gas stations um, and charge and find the gas stations that provide the gas, but but going there, period, is breaking the law. So maybe we put a little more teeth in, in, in this before we, for final passage. Um, and also, this was brought to my attention, like I said earlier, I wasn't aware of this. I don't own ATV. Uh, I'm not against ATVs. But this was brought to my attention that a lot of these ATVs are fitted with these um, aftermarket illegal parts. And you know what he, what he stressed was especially very loud, obnoxious exhaust. Um, so that's, that also creates a, a, a nuisance in the city with, you know, with regards to noise. So um, and, you know, he said some, some are ru ruining it for local residents that you know, safely comply with the use of ATVs. So <clears throat> like I said, I'm not against them. I don't know one. They look like a lot of fun, but maybe we do this and, and think about before moving forward that since we have the opportunity, let's try to do this more fair with everybody involved. So um, if maybe, um, or if you would please, Mrs. Reed, maybe send some of that, what I just mentioned in the form of a correspondence to administration to see what, what we can do with this. Um, that's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Councilman McAndrew. Dr. Rothschild, do you have any motions or comments? Uh, no, I don't have any motions or comments at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Donahue, any motions or comments tonight? 
Uh, yes, just quickly. Um, I did talk to uh, Parks Director uh, Brian Fallon. Um, today I had gotten a couple of complaints about some of the pools with standing water and he was on top of it and was planning on going out and draining those pools uh, anyway. They were just waiting to see what the final decision was on whether pools would open or close. So the pools that have standing water, I know a, a few of the neighbors on a couple of different pools were, uh, you know, concerned about mosquitoes and that sort of thing. So they will be drained, you know, this week and hopefully next week. Um, I did talk to um, DPW Director Tom Preamble this morning also. Uh, he gave me an update on the project at the bottom of Birch Street in between uh, South Washington Avenue and uh, Cedar Avenue. Uh, that project should be done at the end of September, which then the road will reopen. But then by the end of October will be when the full rest, the full road restoration will be done, the full curb to curb paving. So they'll open it up, but then it will just be shut down while it's, while the full restoration is happening. Um, and I also talked to him about a flooding issue up on East Mountain. <clears throat> um, also, one thing I did forget to talk to him about that I think we should uh, just get an update on is, so Ms. Reed, would you be able to, and this is more the administration, I think too, uh, we sent out bids for the engineering for the paving project for this year. Could you just see if we will get legislation? Uh, could you ask this tomorrow too? Because we would need that legislation for tomorrow, I believe, to approve that before our summer recess. Yes, I will. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. And I also got a complaint, uh, and this has been an ongoing issue too, with the 600 block of Donnelly Court, um, just garbage in the alley. And so would we be able to send correspondence uh, to LIPS about that too? And then that's, that's all I have. I'll hold the rest of my comments on ATV and fireworks um, to when that legislation comes up. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councilman Donahue. I just have a few things. Um, I did receive a complaint about the 500 block of Birch Street, uh, an overgrown empty lot. So we sent that along to the licensing and inspections department. Uh, there was quite a few complaints about the 1700 block of Church Avenue. Uh, so we sent that along to the licensing and inspections department as well. I received from uh, Mr. King, our city planner, an update on our stormwater management uh, plan and the stormwater management issues in the city. Uh, in May, there was a meeting via Zoom with a representative from Hubert, Hubert Rowland and Grubick, uh, which is the company that was putting our, uh, we contracted with uh, for our storm, stormwater management issues throughout the city and to come up with a stormwater management plan. Uh, one of the questions that came up in the last few weeks was whether there was a, a drop dead date when a report has to be prepared. Mr. King has reviewed the contract. There's no, no date in there when it says a report has to be due. The consensus in his conversations with representatives from this company uh, and other representatives from the city is that it would make the most sense, and I think we talked about this in the last few years, to have a regional countywide authority um, and Mr. King agrees that this would probably be the best option for a number of different reasons. Uh, the county commissioners, thankfully, are in agreement as well. And he reported that Senator Blake is now working to bring more stakeholders throughout the county together uh, to make this a reality. Um, in May 2019, a permit application was submitted. It is still under review. The Planning Commission had on their March 27, 2020 agenda, the Pollution Reduction Plan to receive and comply with the participation section. The plan is done, but it can't officially be submitted to DEP until there's an actual public meeting. And I believe that that's being uh, planned as we speak. So that's an update on uh, stormwater management. Um, at this time, I'd like to make two motions. Uh, first, I'd like to make a motion that city council send correspondence to the administration for an update on the status of each one of the recommendations made by the Pennsylvania Economy League in the city's exit plan. Second. On the question, 
um, on the question, making this mo motion for a few different reasons. First, I, may, I have, I believe, made this motion in the past and uh, have not really ever received a response from the previous uh, the Courtright administration. Um, I think it's important for a few different reasons. Number one, it's always good to have, um, you know, counsel performing their role as the over uh, legislative uh, oversight of the administration. And number two, when I went through again today and looked through the exit plan, there are so many important recommendations. Uh, and I know for a fact that many of them are not accomplished yet. Now, um, if the legislation in sixth order tonight um, passes and then final passage next week and we have an additional 18 months, that does buy us more time. And these are only recommendations, but if you look through it, uh, they're very important and it really would make, it is common sense uh, to go through with, with uh, all of them. For example, some of the uh, important ones that, that I have been asking about for a while, and I know the, the, this administration is in, in the process of uh, completing a debt management policy, um, a capital improvement financing plan developed by the administration and then approved by, by council. One of the very important ones would be a pension fund governance policy, policy um, an investment policy and program. Um, basically, the, the, the recovery that, or the exit plan says that the city should define investment policies, fixes uh, investment responsibilities, and provides for a clear investment process for the sole reason uh, that um, formally adopting this, this policy would protect officials from legal actions for questionable investment practices. And then one of the other important ones, and there's more, I'm not gonna go through every one of them, but would be an, an updated human resources management plan. That's something that I've been asking about now for the past three or four years, um, a, a database for uh, the personnel in the city. And I know that that was really one of the things that Pell was harping on now for the last few years as well. So uh, that those are the reasons that I'm asking. I know there's members of the public also that were interested in this. so. Um, I look forward to receiving the information. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it and so moved. I'd also like to make a motion now to ask our city clerk, Lori Reed, to send correspondence to the Lackawanna County Solid Waste Management Authority requesting their current and prior waste management plans in the last five years of their financial statements by next Tuesday, July 21st, 2020. Second. There's been a second on the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it and so moved. And that's all I have, Mrs. Reed. Excuse me. Can I add one more thing? You spoke about um, church ad. Uh, yeah, you know what? Um, and right at the end of the meeting would be appropriate. Yeah, okay. right when we get to eighth order. Mrs. Reed. Thank you. 5B for introduction and ordinance amending file of the council number 29, 2018 entitled Acknowledging the Adoption by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania excuse me, by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania of the Pennsylvania Fireworks Law, Act 43 of 2017, acknowledging that the fireworks law prohibits the igniting or discharge of consumer fireworks on public or private property without the express permission of the owner, providing that the city of Scranton does not grant permission for anyone to ignite or discharge consumer fireworks on the streets or sidewalks of the city of Scranton or property owned by the city of Scranton, including without limitation, all of the city owned parks and public buildings, directing that the city of Scranton provide certified copies of the ordinance to all magisterial district judges within the city, providing for a repeal of inconsistent ordinances, providing for the severability of the ordinance and providing that the ordinance shall take effect in accordance with Pennsylvania law to include time restrictions for the use of fireworks to be in compliance with the city of Scranton zoning ordinance for noise levels. This time I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? <clears throat> uh, on the question, um, just uh, 
two questions I have for the administration. One being, um, what is the overall enforcement strategy um, to enforce this um, going forward? And I just also want to make the point that we are we have to stick within that time limit until uh, the state house passes legislation that would allow us to ban the use of these fireworks outright. So that's why we're we're only doing what we can do for the moment. But what, so we still want to encourage members of the public to reach out to their state representatives to support uh, legislation banning, giving the city of Scranton the opportunity to ban these fireworks outright. Thank you. Anyone else on the question? Uh, on the question, I, I think that people throughout the city should have the right to live peacefully in their homes. Uh, I understand as well as anybody else that on the 4th of July, Memorial Day, Labor Day, it's normal to hear fireworks. But a month before the 4th of July, sometimes a month and a half, uh, a month after the 4th of July, it's hard for people to live in their homes. We've heard from them the past few weeks. It's not fair to them. It's not fair to the taxpayers throughout our city to have to be literally uh, up all night and afraid to go outside of their homes. We've heard, and it's been documented, that uh, fireworks have caused uh, catastrophes in terms of fires in garages that have, uh, there was one in Southside, uh, I think on the 4th of July, a garage that was lit on fire, garages that light on fire and then uh, um, turn into lighting the whole home on fire, uh, among a number of other things. So it puts our people in danger. Uh, it puts our veterans in danger in terms of uh, PTSD, puts our uh, children in danger. Um, and it really is a huge burden on our police and our fire department. Um, I had you know, conversations with Chief Graziano about this in previous years. Um, there are important and, and dangerous things outside of fireworks that go on. And we're really being stretched uh, thin here to keep responding to, to all, of, all of these uh, important fireworks calls. So we have to do something. Um, is this the end all be all and the, the, the uh, panacea for this problem? No. Will it be difficult to enforce? Probably. But I think it's giving a little bit more teeth until the uh, state legislature steps up and ultimately, hopefully, uh, bans these commercial grade fireworks uh, for good. I don't think uh, that those type of uh, dangerous fireworks should be in the hands of, of uh, people. They, they have to be, um, you know, whether you have it at Montage Mountain or professional firework shows, but it, it's definitely an issue that has gotten out of control, uh, especially this year, but even in, in previous years, we've heard about it. Anyone else on the question? Yeah, I just want to say um, that, you know, it, it's expected on the 4th of July for fireworks, but you know, in 2017, when the C-class fireworks were, were allowed to be used, guess what? Prior to that, the only people who would set them off are, are pyrotechnicians that are trained and, and safely not to do that. And then allowing that to happen or that change is kind of crazy in 17, where it, it, they were available to anybody. We're lucky that our areas only had, I mean, we're not lucky. We had some horrible situations, but it, it could have been worse or, or it could get worse. So I, I'm really very happy with this legislation. Thank you. And one thing, one thing I did, I said I had two questions for the administration and I didn't get to my second one, but the second one was, you know, it, it, the fine was raised from 150 to 300. You know, is there, is there any downside, I guess, to going even higher for that to create a bigger deterrent? So that's another one I'll, I'll pose. Okay. Anyone else on the question? Good points. Okay, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it and so moved. 5C, for introduction and ordinance, regulating the sale and distribution of gasoline directly into those vehicles that fall under the class of vehicles defined by 75 PA CSA 7702 as being an all-terrain vehicle or ATV or a snowmobile while well, said vehicles are running and providing for enforcement and penalties for violations of this ordinance. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. So moved. 
Um, second. Question? Oh, sorry. Second. There was a sec. Was there a second? I jumped the gun there. Okay. Yeah. On, on the question. On the question, um, I also have, you know, just the same one of the same questions for this one. Just what is the overall enforcement strategy going to be? Um, also, how we're going to give, uh, you know, proper notice to gas station owners. Um, and then there's, you know, I still think there's an issue with uh, credit cards, you know, that, that might fall on the gas station owner at that issue, but just to bring that up, but that's all I have. Anyone else on the question? Uh, it's really the same comments I have for the fireworks legislation too. Um, these ordinances really are intended to maintain our citizens' quality of life and their safety. The ATV issue is one that has kind of exploded over the last few months as well. Um, I have it in my own neighborhood, as I'm sure all of you, you have. They are dangerous. Uh, they are not allowed on public streets in the city of Scranton. Um, and there may be responsible uh, people who ride ATVs. I'm sure there are. I haven't seen any in my neighborhood. I have people who literally drive up on wheelies um, with children on the back of the ATV with no helmets on who fly, they have to be doing 80 to 100 miles an hour zipping up and down. There was just an accident over on Church Avenue, I think two weeks ago with a young guy who got seriously injured. Um, these people are irresponsible. They're not only irresponsible for themselves, but they're irresponsible for the young people, my children, other children who play in the neighborhood, irresponsible for the people now because of the pandemic um, on East Mountain who I talked to, who have to work from home, who literally cannot work from home because these loud ATVs are going up and down their street. No one minds if the ATV is in a wooded area and you're not on a public street, have as much fun as you want. But when you are traversing uh, neighborhoods day in and day out, it is absolutely unacceptable. So these people need to be held accountable. They're breaking the law. Um, I do agree with everyone that spoke tonight that we, we may have to tighten up some of the language a little bit. Um, but it's not, again, just as I mentioned last week with the, the quality of life issues, it's really just not fair to the people who follow the rules and who just wanna live in their homes in peace. And I mean, within the last few months on the, the ATVs and the fireworks on top of it, it's been listening to people, talking to people on the phone who have reached out to me personally, um, just people from uh, different neighborhoods of the city. It's been really difficult uh, for people. So I think that hopefully, uh, again, this legislation certainly will not be a panacea for the problem and won't solve it completely, but I'm hoping that it will will take a step in, in the right direction. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor of uh, introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5D for introduction and ordinance amending file of the council number 74, 1993 as amended entitled the zoning ordinance for the city of Scranton by repealing section 516 entitled flood prone areas and enacting section 516 entitled floodplain management regulations. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. So moved. Second. On the question? Yes, on the question, uh, just as I mentioned in the caucus, these changes stem from the adoption by FEMA of new flood maps set to become effective on August 5th, 2020. In order for the city to participate in the National Flood Insurance Program, the city has to agree to adopt floodplain management regulations that meet or exceed their minimum standards. That is the purpose of these regulations. Uh, the, the maps have changed. If anyone would like to take a look at them, you can go to FEMA's website. You can just uh, make a search on the internet for FEMA uh, floodplain maps and then type in the city of Scranton. You can type in your address and see if you are in uh, located in a floodplain. Um, if you are new to the uh, being in a, a floodplain, according to the new maps, you'll be notified by FEMA um, and then you'll have to uh, purchase flood insurance. So there's, there's a whole process that goes along with that. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 
5E for introduction and ordinance amending file of the council number 11, 2018, entitled Establishing a No Parking Zone Along the West Side of Wyoming Avenue from a point 175 feet south of the intersection with East Gibson Street to a point 325 feet south of the intersection with East Gibson Street to allow for driveway site distance purposes as shown on the attached highway occupancy permit for the Pennsylvania Northeast Regional Railroad Authority to extend the no parking zone along the west side of Wyoming Avenue to a point 160 feet south of the center line of East Gibson Street to a point 415 feet south of the center line of East Gibson Street to allow for driveway site distance purposes as shown on the attached highway occupancy permit for the Pennsylvania Northeast Regional Railroad Authority. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5E be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. Uh, have we gotten any explanation for why this change was being made? Um, this has been, Mrs. Reed, uh, if you could refresh my memory, if you uh, remember, I think this has been in the works for a while. Am I correct in saying that? Uh, yes, you are. Yeah, this, this uh, I know that our, our city engineer was in, con was in contact with, um, with the railroad authority. Uh, we can ask him for a, a more broad explanation, but I know that uh, this has been, I think really even since the beginning of the year, there's, there's been talks on uh, making this move for safety reasons. So we can ask uh, Mr. Poshis for a, a more broad explanation. Well, just, yeah, just because I remember when we voted on this originally, you know, there was some discussion on it. I guess I'll have to go back and look through my notes and see what, so I don't remember exactly what it was either, but I feel like there was an issue or two when we adopted this first ordinance on this. So I'll have to go back for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it and so on. 5F for introduction and ordinance authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to apply for and execute a grant application by the city of Scranton Office of Economic and Community Development to the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development ARC program in the amount of $50,000 to be used to develop an economic development strategic plan for the city. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5F be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. So moved. Second. On the question. On the question, uh, I, I was really pleased to see that OECD and the administration is going after this grant, and I hope that they are uh, successful in, in securing it. I think it's very, very important that um, an economic development uh, strategic plan is developed for the city. Going through and looking at this uh, legislation and the backup that was used um, and the really the rationale, when you look at the unemployment rate in January of 2020 in Scranton, it was 6.3%. In the state of Pennsylvania, it was 4.7%, and nationally, it was 3.6%. So we were, uh, we had a higher unemployment than this, both the state average and the national average. The unemployment rate in April of 2020, because of the pandemic, is unbelievable. 17.8% unemployment rate in the city of Scranton, 15.1% in Pennsylvania and 14.7% nationally. The poverty rate in Scranton is striking, 23.7% in the city, while in Pennsylvania, the average is 12.5% and nationally it's 12.3%. The other thing that's uh, stuck out to me was the median household income in Scranton is $39,066. In Pennsylvania, the average uh, median household income is $60,905, and nationally, it's $61,937. Um, there's no question that we need a strategic plan for economic development, not only in our downtown, but throughout our city. The poverty rate and unemployment rate are significantly higher than the state 
and national averages. I often hear people say, um, you know, why does a police officer make so much or why does a fireman make so much? But the question really should be $60,000, $70,000 in today's environment, it's even hard to raise a family on that, um, as, as some of you know. So the question shouldn't be why does this person make uh, this amount of money or why does that person make that amount of money? It should be why, why can't we raise everybody up together? And I think that's really the goal of uh, this legislation and this, this program to get an actual strategy moving forward, not just for the next year or two years, but really for five and 10 years down the road. So um, I'll, I'll really be looking forward to following this over the next few months and hopefully we, uh, uh, we secure this grant. Anyone else on the question? Yes, I just wanted to echo that, but I agree. I'm uh, also excited to see that um, this is starting to be planned out. I know it's something that um, Ms. Cipriani had mentioned previously when she came before council uh, that she was interested in developing a strategic plan and I'm glad to see um, that we're making some some quick movement on it uh, and that there's some grant opportunities to help us to uh, be able to do that. Uh, I think that our city will be better for it. Um, we, we should have already had a strategic plan but um, here we are and, and we can develop one now that um, helps our economy to grow and um, this helps us become better so thank you definitely anyone else on the question uh yeah i'm also happy to see this i know that it's been something that's been discussed for the past uh, couple of years um but i just would like to point out too that i would also you know like to hear from the administration on what their plans are for the lifts department because you could have the best you know economic development strategy there is if you don't fix the lifts department it's not really going to matter anyone else on the question Okay. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5G for introduction of resolution authorizing an amendment to the multi bridge project agreement entered into between the city of Scranton and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, which amendment increases the total project as set forth herein. Thank you, Mrs. Reed. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5G be introduced into its proper committee. I'll move. Second. On the question? Uh, just, as I mentioned in the caucus, this is legislation is simply amending the multi-bridge project agreement to increase the project costs. Uh, these bridges that are going to eventually be replaced are West Lackawanna Avenue, the Elm Street Bridge over, Lack over the Lackawanna River, North Main Avenue Bridge and the Parker Street Bridge. Uh, our share of funding, the city's share would be increased from 1,287,000 to 1.4 million. And um, the federal government covers uh, roughly 20 and a half million dollars. That's gonna be increased to $23 million roughly. And the state originally was covering 3.8 million and that's gonna increase to uh, 4.3 million. Um, I can't stress enough in, in my conversations over the past really year and a half with uh, the city engineer, um, previous DPW director and the administration, how crucial it is that we replace these bridges and how crucial it was really to get this uh, bundling package together for all of these bridges. Um, I know that it's going to take time. It'll probably take a few years uh, when all is said and done. But our bridges are in really rough condition. Um, I, I don't have it in front of me, but we received a report uh, that grades every bridge in the city. And our grades were not good on many of the bridges. And if it gets to a certain level, um, the bridges will have to be uh, closed and they'll have to be, uh, routes will have to be changed, which will cause you know chaos uh, in, in terms of traffic. So um, I do wanna thank uh, the administration and previous administrations for making sure that this got done. Because at one time, even with the West Lackawanna Avenue bridge, things were stalling um, and we were in danger of uh, not moving forward. So I'm glad to see uh, this on our agenda. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, reading by title, file of the council number 12, 2020, an ordinance amending file of the council number 111, 2017 of the city of Scranton, 
adopting and implementing the Act 47 exit plan for the City of Scranton pursuant to the Financially Distressed Municipalities Act and authorizing the Mayor of the City of Scranton to issue an order directing the implementation of the Act 47 exit plan amendment, which will become effective upon adoption attached hereto as Exhibit A in accordance with the provisions of 53 PA CSA Section 11701.249, the Municipalities Financial Recovery Act. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? Someone has to read that second line there. <laughs> Hello out there, anyone? Um, I move to uh, uh, this piece to, uh, to, to its proper committee. Um, okay, if you look, yeah, the it's, it should, well, it should say, I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Yes, uh, I move uh, item 6A pass by reading by title. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second. On the question? On the question, um, I know we're still waiting from DCD uh, a list of the financial benefits of Act 47. And I still do have uh, some reservations regarding the tripling of the LST. So hopefully we could figure out a plan for those before next week. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6B, reading by title, file of the council number 13, 2020. An ordinance amending file of the council number 22, 2014. An ordinance entitled. An ordinance amending file of the council number 26, 2013. An ordinance entitled. Amending file of the council number 22, 2006. Entitled authorizing and approving the designation of parking spaces for certain city of Scranton personnel in and along Dick's Court, the parking area in the rear of city of Scranton municipal building and a parking lot along Mulberry Street adjacent to Scranton Fire Headquarters and authorizing the city of Scranton Police Department to enforce the parking designations as reflected in the attached schematic by redesignating certain employee parking spaces from individual names to letters from A to Z as reflected in the attached schematic. Sorry, muted there. You've heard reading by title of item 6B. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6B pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order, 7A for consideration by the committee on rules for adoption. Resolution, excuse me, file of the council number 11, 2020, approving the transfer of a restaurant liquor license owned by Oak Street Express LLC, 610 North Main Street, Taylor, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, 18517. Restaurant liquor license number R-3114 to Aradia Bev Beer LLC, 401 Wyoming Avenue, Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, 18503, as required by the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board. As chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 46, 2020, calling on the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to reinstate the Fireworks Act of 1939.
As chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes, I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. And then I know uh, Councilman Schuster, you had something to add about Church Avenue? Um, yeah, just to add to that discussion, um, and I don't want to say the, the address wrong, but there was a, an apartment building on, I'd say, 1705, 1707 North Main Avenue um, that uh, when it um, was reopened for occupancy, there was supposed to be a parking pad put in the rear of that building, I think, for six spots because it required 1.5 spots for, for the occupancy of those apartments, and it caused a um, it caused parking issues going going up Putnam, which then in turn pushed cars up onto Church Avenue. So maybe that's something that could be added to your um, your piece regarding Church Avenue. I don't know if that has been fixed as of this point, but it caused them, um, there was individuals parking in yards and everything there along, I'd say maybe the corner of Putnam and Church due to the, the, um, the amount of parking spaces for that apartment building. Yeah, definitely. We can add that, add that in. Thank you very much. Okay, if there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting's adjourned. Thanks, everyone. See you next week.